Well, day three of the Warrior Training Camp and the countdown to opening night? 27 is GSW countdown. That is today, day 27. That's why I always have Jim with me on that stuff. But when you look at today, well, let's look at the wings. Now, a wing in the NBA, the two, the three spot, and really the only spot where the Warriors have open competition at the starting position. Harrison Barnes, Richard Jefferson, Brandon Rush, Draymond Green. We'll even throw a little Kent Bazemore for you, but do you think it's wide open at the starting spot at the three? I think absolutely it is wide open. It's the only spot right now where several players are vying for a starting position. And it can be Harrison Barnes, it could be Richard Jefferson, and certainly Brandon Rush. And, and I probably would lean towards Brandon Rush because that spot, you've got to have an athletic person who can defend. We know who these other players are on the perimeter, primarily offensive players with Clay Thompson and the backcourt along with Steph Curry. So that wingman has to be someone that can lock down some people. And Brandon Rush has proven to me and in the past that he can be that kind of player. Unbelievable year for Brandon Rush. Played 65 games. He started only once, so off the bench he was terrific. 45% on threes and shot better than 50% from the field. But what you said, Jim, was so right defensively. When you think of the Carmelo Anthony's of the world, the Kevin Durant's of the world, Kobe, you're going to need some guys at the wing spot to guard somebody, particularly when they're rolling in this league. Yes, and he's proven he can be a re very good defensive rebounder as well. You know, when I think of someone chasing down a, a runner who has the ball in his hands, seemingly for an easy layup, and if somebody comes out of nowhere and blocks it from behind, I think of two people, LeBron James and I think of Brandon Rush. He's in that same kind of category. He has that kind of energy. He's a very quick jumper. But he also knows how to keep his man in front of him. And he can shoot the lights out. He shot 45% from three-point range, and he shot over 50%. So he's going to give you offense. And also, intriguingly enough, you know, he's come off the bench a lot in his career. He wants to be that starter. Talking to him, you can see that he's vying for that starting spot. And you know, he said, I'll, I'll do anything they want. I'll come off the bench, but I prefer to be a starter. And so he's got that kind of competitive juice going right now, and I like that. You look at Richard Jefferson, all that playoff experience. has been on excellent teams, has been a starting three for a long time in this league. Still shot 40% on threes, another warrior that can stripe it from distance. But is Richard Jefferson's job the mentor job? Is it? In certain situations, Mark Jackson goes with experience over everything. Where does he fit in? Yeah, you, I, I think he's, he's 32 years of age, and if you give him that mentor thing, he's going to reject that. He still can contribute. But if you look over Richard Jefferson over the last few years, he's shooting predominantly three-point shots. Mm -hmm. Now, that's part of the system in San Antonio. We all, all understand that. And it'll be part of the system here with the bigs in the middle, with Andrew Bogut and all the perimeter shooting that the Warriors have. He used to be a pretty good defender as well. Mm -hmm. But I do know this, as you get older, your defense suffers. You can all, if you're a scorer, you'll find ways to score in this league, but you can't always stay up and defend as well. Now, Richard Jefferson still has something to offer. He will get those minutes, whether it be a starting spot or off the bench, and he will contribute. That's the beauty that uh, with that position, it can be revolving with different players, and you can find the hot hand on a given night. Well, we talked to RJ about his role on this team, mentoring Harrison Barnes, and where Richard Jefferson fits in at the small forward spot. My job is to stay ready. If he asks me to start, start. If he asks me to come off the bench, come off the bench and, and, and play hard. How do you explain it to the average fan? Yeah. Um, you no, you explain. You explain. I mean, are you, you trying to help Harrison Barnes? Yes, because I want to win. Yeah. I like you explain. You explain it to anyone that's working in a company. Uh, anyone that works in a company and has a group of individuals together, obviously you want to succeed, obviously you want to do well, but at the end of the day, we all have stock options. So as long as the company's playing well, we're all making money. The success of the team is what um, everyone's focused on. So I don't really care if I'm in the third unit the first day of practice. Um, I don't, you know, I've been a starter for 12 years. So uh, it's not something that I focus on, it's just you know, success. So if you look at Richard Jefferson, you talk about Brandon Rush, but the lottery pick for the Warriors, Harrison Barnes out of North Carolina, very good shooter. We saw that in Summer League. Can you start a rookie there? Because here's my thing. If you start the rookie, he's playing with Steph and Clay, David Lee, and Bogut. Is it tougher for a young guy to come off the bench and figure out where he fits in on a team? I think it is for most young people, but perhaps not with Harrison Barnes. There's something unique and different about Harrison Barnes. He knows he belongs in this league. He's got maturity. He's got tremendous confidence in his abilities. He is not intimidated by anything out here in this training camp right now. He knows he can score. 
I, I believe Roy Williams is a very good teacher at North Carolina. They play a good team game. Mm -hmm. Probably if you had taken Harrison Barnes and put him on Krzyzewski's roster at Duke, he might have averaged 25 points a game and let him go. He has got to pick up defensively. That's, that's where, to me, although he wasn't willing to admit that, he feels he's okay <laughs> with that too right now. But I think that defensively is where he would struggle a little bit and where he'd have to improve. But if he plays well enough in practice and he plays well enough in exhibition games that are coming up, you play yourself into that position and onto the roster. Um, but I, I don't believe that he will be intimidated by throwing him out there on the court early. But I probably would suggest it'd be wise to bring him off the bench for a while and let him acclimate himself as it is. But I will say this about Harrison Barnes, Bob. I truly believe that he is one of those unique talents that has a special quality and a special gift, and he could be a premier player in this league. And I'm not talking about a good player. I'm talking about an elite player. If he wants to be an elite player, I believe that he has the capacity and the gifts and the ability to be so. Well, you mentioned lack of intimidation. Harrison Barnes certainly not intimidated when you put a camera in his face. He's been asked a lot about being a starter and about this very first rookie training camp for him. You know, I'm trying to go out there and get better every day. Um, I don't get too involved with all that kind of stuff. I try to go out here and just try to make myself the best basketball player, best basketball player I can be. Uh, <laughs> you try to do all the little things. I mean, obviously, you know, there's plenty of scoring, you know, with Steph and Clay, obviously D. Lee, you know, with Bogan in there, I mean, there's plenty of scoring. So you just want to try to do the best you can defensively, you know, and trying to get those guys involved and then just make plays when you can. Well, the rest of the wing discussion is a couple Swiss Army Knife guys. Where does Draymond Green out of Michigan State, where does Kent Bazemore, who really the scouts have been on since Old Dominion as well as his summer league play, where do they fit in on this roster? And let, let's start with Draymond Green. I think he's more of a four than a three. He's, he's one of those guys that, is he a good shooter? Is he a rebounder? Can he handle the ball? He's a winner. And playing for Tom Izzo, having him on the court, he's going to make the right decisions. He's a basketball player, and he is a tough customer, Jim. I've always liked Draymond Green. Well, I, I thought you used a good word there with a hybrid. He knows how to play. He played four years under Tom Izzo at Michigan State. So he understands the game. 145 games in college, that's good experience. He got better every year. I didn't realize that he was the NABC Player of the Year in mm -hmm. Division I basketball. The Big Ten Player of the Year. He was the most outstanding player in the Big Ten tournament, but he does everything well. I wouldn't say he does any one thing that's great. He's an adequate shooter. He's an adequate shooter from three-point range in college. Probably this line would be a little too far right now, right. but he understands that because he understands how to play the game. But he rebounded all through his college career. That's where I was going. He's a terrific rebounder, and he's one of those players that will find the ball. In fact, there's those types of players that somehow the ball finds them, and that kind of falls into his hands. And he knows how to put it in the basket. He knows how to play defense. He's going, you, know, you can count on him to throw him out there in the midst of stuff and he'll know what the team needs at that time mm -hmm. and he's not going to do something that will hurt the team. He's, he's just going to make good plays for you and he's a, what a pick at number 35. A lot of people thought he was going earlier in that first round. The Warriors just another thing and uh, another jewel in the draft this year and he could be a surprise. He's, he's a sleeper. He's a sleeper and we just don't know where he's going to come into play. You look at Kent Bazemore, lefty, long, lanky, can guard ones, twos, sometimes threes. In the summer league, he was instrumental in the Warriors' defensive effort. And I think the Warriors scouts looked at him and said, if you had a point guard going crazy or an off guard and Klay Thompson, Steph Curry, foul trouble or something like that, Bazemore might, might be a specialist mm -hmm. where he comes in to play in the flow yeah. but also to specifically lock down a guard or a ball handler. One of those players that you don't hear about too much. He was undrafted, mm -hmm. not a big scorer, not a great shooter. Uh, but he can specialize at the defensive end. And that's where he will be called upon. And you're exactly right. Somebody who sits on the bench for maybe five, six, seven, eight games doesn't get even a whiff. And all of a sudden, Chris Paul's going crazy and you yep. need to do something. And he comes out there and he gives you something and he plays himself into the rotation. Mm -hmm. A lot like Dominic McGuire did last year. And uh, it'll be hard to find minutes early for him, but he can make a difference and, and uh, possibly be the difference between winning or losing a game with his defensive capability. Well, if you look at the wing discussion, you got to find a starter, so that'll be the first thing. 
Brandon Rush, we have Harrison Barnes, the veteran Richard Jefferson. Draymond Green, does he play as a speed four? Does he play as a bulkier three? Do they use Kent Bazemore as a relief pitcher to come in and guard the ones and twos, maybe some threes? He's the defensive stopper as a youngster, and that's his role on this team. So interesting at the two, three spot, the wings today as we continue previewing everything in Warriors training camp on Warriors TV.